back to Skin of Flowers and welcome back to Hair to Hero with Hair to Blend and Foot Manager 2020 with me, Foggy Plays. As you can see, the microphone is directly in front of me. I've been having some audio issues recently and I thought maybe this might help. It is also probably going to tear your ears off. But I can get real close and be like, hey, you like jazz? So we're taking on AC Milan today in the Champions League first knockout round, second leg. And as you can see, league-wise, it's going quite well. One issue, Esposito is injured. It's less than ideal. As you can see, can't finish any lower than seventh in the league. Woo! We are doing well. So, recent games since you were here last in the 4-0 win against Nuremberg. We then went and beat Werder Bremen 3-2. A lot less convincing than it could have been. Uh, Zanino, Vinicius Jr. and Graciar all scoring. Esposito did miss a penalty, which was a little bit disappointing. Then against Fortuna, Dusseldorf, we beat them 2-1. Mina and Gavidal with the goals. Then against Schalke in the Pokal quarterfinals, we excuse me, we won 1-0. Kyo George with the 60th minute goal. Schalke were very difficult to beat in that game. So then we went and played Hoffenheim. Beat them 3-2. Esposito with a penalty. Vinicius Jr. and Grassier all scoring goals. Bodu did score in the 90th minute. Just as a, I suppose, a fuck you to us. Then we went and played Mines. Beat them 5-0. They were third or fourth in the league at the time. Uh, not anymore. Hespacito got a brace. Carlos Mina, Kyle George and Johnson Fryer all scoring. Then we beat AC Milan at home in the first leg of the first knockout round. Gentile scored in the eighth minute. Then Johnson Fryer with a brace. And then Esposito scored in the 89th minute. We did, we did quite well. We were really good. They they weren't as good as us, and we won. Then we went and beat Ingolstadt 5-0. Quite convincing. Kyle George with a single goal. Esposito with a cheeky little hat-trick. And Vinicius Jr. also scoring. Then against Schalke, Vinicius Jr. scored our equaliser. Second half, pretty much nothing happened. Kyle George was absolutely atrocious in this game. And I will say, Arne Meyer caused Schalke to score which oh, it breaks my heart it breaks my heart uh, then against Cologne we won 1-0 Kyle George made up for the fact that he was terrible in the game before by scoring which you know that's what you want you want players to make up for the fact that they were terrible the game before so um, for this game as you can see Stuttgart are ahead against Sion we're the Tuesday kick up we are um, so far, PSG are true after knocking United out. Chelsea knocked out Atletico Madrid. Liverpool have knocked out Real Madrid. Inter Milan got knocked out by Leipzig. Uh, Sevilla are three up against Leon. Barcelona are three up against Porto. We have a three goal advantage over AC Milan. Stuttgart two one against Sion. So current holders, we have to we have to just make you have to make it in the next round. You know that's it's what we do. So we've beaten AC Milan. Four times out of the six we have played them. They've only beaten us once. Today will not be that day. They are not going to beat us again. Today we are lining up with Bingham and Goal, Horvath and Michael as our wingbacks. Fryer and Gavidal in central defence. Swazley and Arne Meyer as our central midfield. Mina and Vinicius Jr. as our wide men. Vinicius Jr. and Michael have picked up quite the uh, partnership already. Which is nice to see. Kyle George and Hulk up front. Uh, Harvey Elliott, who was actually wanted by Aston Villa, sitting on the bench. He has come on a couple of times recently to play as the inverted winger on the right. And he has been oh, so very good. We had youth and tech. And this guy is the best of the players to come through. I haven't gone through and changed any of their faces yet for the new gens. But he ha he's, 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 he's going to be good. I think he's going to be good. He comes in not as the best new gen current ability wise. Her Vincent is after coming in as whoa, his potential just rocketed up since I last checked it which was yesterday in game um, I'm not 100% sure what to do with this guy because he can really do anything he can be whatever I want him to be so I'm going to teach him to be a box box I have considered making him um, a complete forward he has 10 finishing he's 15 could also do centre back this, this guy can do whatever he wants. He is fantastic. Um, 
Is there anyone else in this list? We have Theodore Koneman, who is going to be a roaming playmaker, I think. He's another Dutch player. He's an attacking midfielder, but again, could be a striker, could be a central midfielder. A lot of the players, Renan uh, Rierdo Halil, 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 again, another attacking midfielder who looks fairly decent, to be fair. Uh, yes, sir, Debbie, the Hebe. He's not terrible. He's not great, but he's not terrible. Um, star and a half. We do have some player. I pretty much saw, I think I signed every one of them. Bar this guy. I will give you a contract. Go on, why not? You can have a contract. I gave everyone else a contract. Why not? There you go. You got a new contract. You are joining the boys. Um, but as you can see, we have Salas, who is a right winger. One star current ability, four and a half star potential. This guy could be quite good. We'll have to wait and see. We have a goalkeeper who looks like he could be decent at some point in his career. Not right now. But you know, at some point. Um, I, I still think Fabian Arp or her Vincent Vincent could be amazing. Um, along with Zasala as Shalas and Gunaman. But then again there's Alyaka Al Alkaya who is going to be a centre back because I think he is a centre back. Look at that. sixteen heading, sixteen tackling. He's 16 years old and he's six foot three he's got 15 jumping years this guy's gonna be a monster we can make him being a, a target man and he'd be fantastic probably uh, maybe not so much um other than them there's like a bunch of random shitters we signed as well uh see yeah like this guy all he's got really is he's he can accelerate has a bit of pace a bit of stamina he's quite determined he's angry that's about it he can't do much else so i just gave everyone a contract because i said why not um, cause the majority of them were like three and a half star potential. So get in the get in the under nineteens. We were lacking players in the under nineteens. Majority of our under nineteen squad is players that are out on loan. So we're just gonna give everyone a chance to play under nineteen football and see what they do in two years. Because most of them have two year contracts because of their age. Like um. He's got the longest contract. Fabian Arp. He's going to be here for four years before he... Yeah, because he's 15. So yeah. No. That's how it goes. So. Now that we've rabbled on as much as we have. Esposito, as I said, is out injured for two weeks. Just, we've been a bit lackluster without him. Um, Alec is suspended for this game. So obviously he can't play. Uh, Jupp is unregistered as is Piejo. And... Alpha Junior is coming back from an injury that he had and Zanino sits this one out because Eduardo Lewis has been exceptional since he arrived. He has in the Champions League has played a 7.6 against AC Milan. Um, in the Bundesliga has played a 7.37 in the four games he's played. He's been fantastic. I am genuinely considering playing him ahead of Arne Meyer in the not too distant future. So we just see if his attributes increase as rapidly as they have been since he's arrived, he will definitely get a chance in the first team. Um, the only questionable decision I've made for this first leg probably is starting Hulk. He's not been the best, but Grassier has been really poor in the last few games. So I've kind of hummed and hawed about whether I wanted to start Grassier. And I'm just giving Hulk the chance to prove that he should be in the first team. Because he has four and a half star potential, I think it is. And I really want him to do well. Or is it, is it four? Yeah, four and a half star potential. Grassier only has four. But Grassier has seven internationals. Hulk has played... Okay, they have the same international record. Never mind. They've both played seven. Scored twice. Yeah, there's not, not a whole lot between them. Um, going into this game, though, we are definitely fitter than they are. They have a couple of players already in the 70s. Well, no. 
There's two players in the 80s, one in the 70s. We should do well. Horvath, long throw, Hulk. It's somehow going to end off Hulk. Our Icelandic striker has somehow scored from what looked like a defensive calamity rather than the fortune yeah this, it was one of their centre backs kicked the ball off Hulk and it went into the back of the net so got a little bit lucky it looks like Aaron Myers after picking up a bit of a a knock so hopefully he doesn't it isn't a bad injury because I don't really want the injuries ruining our season we've been quite well quite well quite good so far this year uh, league wise we're still only that one defeat to Borussia Dortmund um, I think AC Milan deserve that goal after the calamity that was their defence for our goal I'm disappointed in our defence though that was not good to say the least uh, we have nullified their away goal now though by scoring our own and wan tries to get the ball across but Gets headed away in Dumbele to Romagnoli, and their left winger clatters the woodwork. So the one, one uh, hit of the woodwork. So for Arne Myers picked up a big boy injury and a knee injury. You don't want to see that. Just before halftime, we lose Arne Meyer to an injury. Eduardo Carlos is, or Eduardo Luis is coming on at Carlos, and. Lewis gets it across. Horvath, Kyo George gets a shot block. Garvidal. Why is Garvidal on the right? Why is he playing as a right winger? He's our left centre back. So we've definitely been the second best team so far. Uh, Stuttgart are doing the business over Sion. Um, I'm going to say I'm not happy because we really should be doing better. Um, disappoint. I want, I'm curious how long Arne Meyer is going to be out for because even though Eduardo Luis has been really good don't want to lose Arne Meyer. he is the king of Hertha and we've gotten away with that one just, just a tad if I do say so myself Viniscus Jr. and Mina having a poor game Michael's having a poor game Horvitz having a poor game hmm and AC Milan score quite an easy goal. Johnson Fryer looked like he was the one that just kind of it was between him and Horvath. Yeah, it's just he got the striker got on the other the wrong side of him. Uh, we're gonna ask for a bit of creativity when we can, if we ever can. All right, we're gonna make a couple of changes to this we're going to attack their strikers we're going to be a bit more aggressive when it comes to their goalkeeper and, and centre backs put them under a little bit more pressure Kyle George just gets very easily dispossessed by Endombele Horvath all the way back to Bingham what's Bingham going to do with us dinks it over the top to Savazle gets it across to Viniscus might be coming off. Just have to wait for those changes to be made so I can take Viniscus Jr. off. Pinamonte. Oh, it's not going well. Oh, it is not going well. Oh, it is not going well. Um, I take Michael off. Bring Gentile off with Swap those two around make you a centre back and Viniscus Jr. is coming off four and bring on Grassier as an inverted winger yeah that's what we're going to do hopefully uh, Gentile can do something in, this, in our defence if uh, if they score one more goal then the game is evened up I'm not going to stop, stop attacking that's not how we 
are we all? Thankfully, Bingham gets down to pluck that one out of... Oh, we can't make any more changes. Oh, I forgot that I had to take Arne Meyer off. Pinamonte is after getting a hat-trick against us. I had been considering signing Pinamonte for a little while. I think he's proven today that he is better than some of our strikers. I can't believe Hulk was our best striker, our best player on the pitch. That is insane. We have managed to go through, even though we struggled for <laughs> for that result. Um, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna give out to some of my players because they were really not. That was far far closer than it needed to be. We're not at your best. I'm gonna tell the Hulk that he was. That he was good. Uh, Viniscus Jr. was abysmal. Arnie Meyer is going to you know, take you off to avoid further injury. Hand over to the assistant. We just, we snuck through. We, oh, 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 we. I am glad we scored four in that first leg. Arnie Meyer is only up for three days. That was a red injury. Are you serious? Red injury. 8.18 million for getting through to the next round. Um, have we got the? I don't think we have the draw for the next round yet. No, that'll be drawn in a couple of days. Um, should be interesting. We have the second leg is going to be at the same time as our game against Bayern Munich, which that game has already been moved because Bayern Munich are playing Villarreal in the Europa League. So the game was originally scheduled for somewhere in between the 10th and the 20th. And the Villarreal game pushed our game back. So our Champions League game surely won't push it back again, will it? No. There's plenty of time in between. That is delightful. We end our season against Borussia Dortmund as well. Who have dropped a fourth in the league. They were second for quite a while. Um, as you can see, we're having a very, very nice season. Five draws this year. A little disappointed with the Schalke and the Hoffenheim draws. The Fortuna Dusseldorf. That was, that was a terrible, terrible one as well. Um, we do have quite good players though. Like Esposito has 28 goals this season. And has a 7.8 average rating. Kyle George with a 6.6 .6, or 7.66. Carlos Mina with a 7.62. Also, Mina, 11 assists. Esposito, eight paired matches. Bingham, eleven clean sheets. The man has been fantastic. One of our players, Cazetta, who is on an English stat, has the most yellow cards. Um, oh my god, St. Pauli won a game. <gasps> when did that happen? When did St. Pauli win their game? I didn't notice that. How long ago was it? They beat English stat on the 9th of March. English that started the season so well back down to the 15th where, where they spend most of their time now um, so the next episode will be in the Champions League quarter final second leg against somebody we find out in the not too distant future so if you have enjoyed please do make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe share with all of your friends and um, I'll see you in the next one